Revelation, Revelation 2, 20, the word of God says, Notwithstanding, I have few things against thee, because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which called herself prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servant to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. God is saying in the book of Revelation, when the word of God was speaking, and this was the seventh uh, message to the seven churches, and the message to the interior, that I have uh, uh, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Yes, you have suffered the woman Jezebel, which called herself prophetess. You have suffered to do what? Which called herself prophet to teach and to seduce my servant. Number one, God was saying that you have suffered that woman. Jezebel, she called herself Jezebel. She called herself prophetess to teach. So that is number one. Number one accusation for the church even today is this, that you have suffered. I have a few things against thee because you have suffered that woman Jezebel which called herself prophetess to teach. That's why even Paul himself said, I do not suffer a woman to teach or to take authority of a man. So when Paul was speaking those words, he was speaking the same way Jesus Christ spoke in the book of Revelation uh, 2.20 that I suffer, you have suffered yeah, that woman, Jezebel, yes, by her title she called herself prophetess to teach, yes, and to seduce my servant. That's the spirit, the spirit of Jezebel today, that she have, she have been suffered to teach, simply because she called herself prophetess. You see, when a woman want to teach of a man, when she want to be a reader of a man, when she want to be a pastor, when she want to take control of a man, number one, she will call herself prophetess. She will say she have divine power. She have divine spirit. She see vision. She prophet. Uh, she prophesy. Uh, she dream dreams. She will speak and she will say she is a prophetess. When she come with that title of a prophetess, then she will now teach men. And she will take authority over men. That's what the, exactly the scripture say. That I suffer, I don't suffer a woman to teach or to take authority over men. You can teach women. You can take authority over other women. But not men. Listen to me. That's the scripture. And when you take authority over men, you are violating the word of God. And Jesus says, I have few things against you. You who have tolerated. You have suffered that woman who called herself Jezebel and who called herself prophetess to teach. For through teaching, she has deceived and seduced my servant to commit fornication. You hear? That's how this spirit of Jezebel has intruded in the church, destroyed in the church, attacked in the church, and has de destroyed, yes, the order and the government of the church. Because the government of the church or the government of God was from God, from God to Jesus, from Jesus to men, from men to women. But today, that government has been changed. Whereby, they are saying that women, what women can do, men can do. What a man can do, men can do. What a man can do, women can do. They are saying it is women's power. That a woman can do whatever a man can do. Yes. And so they are competing with the men. They are competing with the men. That's the spirit of Jezebel that is ruling and taking over in the church, in the families, in the, in the nation. The spirit of taking authority over men. When they take authority over men, they will make sure that men has no power. Men has no power. Remember the word of God says that the women, they are to submit and they are to be under the authority of who of man because a woman will never be head a woman will never be head jesus from jesus there is the man from the man there's a woman i respect a woman and i respect all women but women will never be head men are always the head that's what the scripture say but today this spirit of jezebel they hate to hear about this subjection. They hate to hear about some meeting. They hate to hear about a man being in the head. They say we can all be head. And they say that they put the scripture. There is no Jew, there is no uh, Gentile. All of, the, all of us are, the, are equal before God. That's how they deceive people. 
But Paul was not foolish. He was not mad. How could he say, he say there's no uh, Jew, there's no Gentile, there's no woman, there's no man? When he was speaking about, uh, about uh, leadership, Paul was not speaking about leadership. He was speaking about salvation. There is no, all people are equal before God. They can receive salvation. There's no Gentile, there's no Jew. All people, they can receive salvation. But not equal, that equal in authority, it cannot be. If we are equal in authority, even in bed, that means they are equal. That means even a man will have now to come uh, to, be, to be pregnant because they are equal. This one, God, when God created man and woman, he gave a, a man certain responsibility and a woman certain responsibility. But this spirit of Jezebel is, is saying that we are equal. We are equal. So what? We can do everything. So what? We can carry pregnant. So what? Men can also give birth. So what? Women can also uh, be readers, can also be uh, uh, beheaded. No! If that is confusion and total confusion out of the word of God. Praise Jesus. The word of God says this, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which called herself prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servant, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. When the spirit of Jezebel teaches, there, there will be what we call seduction, there will be fornication, and they, they will teach things sacrificed unto the idols. Because that's what Jezebel did. When Jezebel took over, when Jezebel took over, when she destroyed the, 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 the government of the church, or the government, the order of God, and she became the head, Israel, they worshipped Baal. They worshipped Baal. See that. Even in the book of Isaiah, the Bible says that those who read you, they have caused you to error. That the men, women have become your readers. That's what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah. That women, those who control you, women, they have, they have read you astray. Because when you change or when you interchange the government of God, when you bring a woman up and a man down, you will be reading people to error. The same way that she, to teach and to seduce my servant, to commit fornication and to teach, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. That's what they did when they did not recognize the authority of a man, the right of God. You see, from God to Jesus, to man, then to woman. That's the order. But now the church today, they have destroyed that order. That's the sign of the spirit of Jezebel, which is ruling in the church, which is ruling in the nation, which is ruling even in the family. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 11, 3, 1 Corinthians 11, 3. This is what will stand even in the day of judgment. You see, when we read that scripture, some people say, Oh, you are so much against women. And I say, I am not against women. I know women, they are called. I know they can be anointed. But they cannot be anointed to be, to rule over men. They cannot take authority over men. They may be anointed, they may be called, but their ministry will be always different from men. That means they will never take authority over men. They will not want to rule men. Our truly woman of God will, want, will not rule men. She will rule other women. She will teach other women. Like the Bible says that women have been called, they have been given ministry, that you women teach other women about godliness, about holiness. Teach them even about your house and about the families, keeping your husband. There are certain many ministries of women, but the women today they don't want those many uh, ministries. But they want to be bishop, they want to be apostle, they want to be pastors, and some they are calling themselves even like bishops because they are rejecting the ministries of God ordained woman, but and they are going to another ministry which do not belong to them. And when they go there, I tell you the truth, they will cause people to error. The spirit of Jezebel will take over and will start seducing people and leading them to idol worship, to another God, 
another kind of worship, another kind of holiness, another kind of doctrine. Because not the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is not uh, of confusion. The Spirit of God has an order. From God to Jesus, from to Jesus to men, to men are to, uh, to women. But when you bring confusion, I tell you, that's not the church of Jesus Christ that you are building. That's your own church. I say, if the church belongs to you, then rule the way you want. Do whatever you want to do. But if the church belongs to Jesus Christ and the word of God, you must follow the, uh, the, the word of God and the government that comes from God. But if the church belongs to you, you are building your own church, your own kingdom. Therefore it is well, do what you want to do. But you not lead people to the eternity. The truth is what we should follow. First Corinthians 11 verses, verses 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3. The Bible saying, Now I praise you, brethren, that I remember re, I, uh, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Look at that. That the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus Christ. Who, what is the head? The meaning of the head, the head is the one that rules. Do you know a transist? Do you know a roll? Or a train? Where is the head? The head is not at the tail. The head is always in the front. Because it is the head that leads. Do you know that? So, when we come to the ruling, the head must rule. The head must become the leader. And it is through the head we have the authority. That's why the, the Bible says, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of every woman is a man. So if you are a woman, the, your head should be a man. The one that you should, should lead you should be a man. The one that should be taking a lot over you should be a man. Do you understand? And he say, and the head of Christ is God. Hallelujah. And the head of, of, of Christ is God. So this is the order of the kingdom of God. This is the order of God and of the kingdom of God. But when we come in this world, this order has been neglected. This order has been destroyed. And I tell you, there is no truth if we will destroy the order of the word of God, the order of God's kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. When we have this order, we are covered and protected by God. And the wicked one will not stand against us. But when we pervert this order, that is where we, we see that even children, they want to be, they, 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 they are male, but they want to be like a female. Because as they have been seeing, their mother has been, been the head. So you refine that, even the women, rather the girls, the daughters, they have that spirit of feminism taking over, over men. They cannot be told anything. They don't have subjection. They don't have submission. They cannot even marry or be married. Because when they go to, they, when they be married, they don't submit. So they want to rule their husband. And so, what do they do? They come to a point that women are now marrying another woman because of authority. They feel that I cannot be controlled by man. Me, I cannot be controlled by man. I cannot be under man. Because they have their own money. They have their own power. They have their own authority. So when the time comes, they don't, they cannot submit under man. So they go, they marry other, another woman. The origin of this corruption, this confusion of homosexuality, lesbianism, and gay, it is, be, it is because of this, when they destroyed the order of the family, when they destroyed the order of the family, they have destroyed even the generation. Even the generation. From Christ to man, from man to woman, the head of Christ is God. And the head of man is Christ. And the head of a woman, it is man. But when they destroy that, and they put a woman above, then man bottom, 
I tell you, that is the beginning of perversion generation, uh, so Sodom and Gomorrah generation, a generation that is wicked, rebellious, uh, homosexual, homosexual people. That's the generation because the, the, the order of God has been corrupted, surely has been corrupted. If we want to begin, we must begin right there in the family. We must begin there in the family. If we want to change the nation, let us begin in the family and correct this order. And it shall be well. Praise the name of the Lord. It shall be well. This is what the word of God said. And why did he say that? Because he knew if you will damage this order, then you have damaged your generation. You have damaged your generation. Praise Jesus. It is a good thing when that order is kept like that. Because all things go well and smooth. But when we go against this, I tell you, it is, it is over. The devil managed to attack the family, the children, the nation. And that is how we, you see, even today, the spirit of feminism is taking over. The spirit of fem feminism is taking over everywhere. Everywhere. That's the reason why uh, power uh, by the Holy Spirit, he spoke that. And most people, they hate power when he speak about women. But he did not speak with the, out of anger or out of, uh, of, of, of that he hate women. He spoke according to the Spirit of God. And as you know, like the whole of the, 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 the Bible, which helped the church, uh, it is Apostle, pa Apostle Paul. He spoke about uh, the church. He, he spoke about the church so much. Mm. He, he cannot be contradicted. He cannot contradict himself when he spoke those things. First Timothy chapter 2, 12. The word of God saying, But I suffer. Let the uh, 11 say, Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach or to assert authority of a man, but to be silent. You see, that I suffer not a woman to teach nor to assert authority of a man. Hallelujah. To assert what? Authority of a man. And that thing he say, For Adam was first, uh, for Adam was first formed then Eve. That's what the word of God say. That for Adam was done what? Was first. And as we can see this, even as he continue giving order, when we read three say, this is the true saying, if a man desired the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop then must be a brameless, the husband of one wife. Hear that. Even a bishop, they should not be women bishop. The Bible say a bishop must be brameless, a husband of one wife, not a wife of one husband, but a husband, a husband of one wife. And the Bible say that should be the bishop. But look at today, the spirit of Jezebel, it have destroyed everywhere. We have bishop like women, we have bishop, we have apostles, every pastors, they are there. They are there. What is this? The, the signs of the spirit of Jezebel in the church, in the society, is that they have refused the order of God. It is when they want to rule over men and when they don't want to be under authority of a man. That is the spirit of Jezebel and sign to the spirit of Jezebel. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. I tell you the truth. Even if you can be filled by the Holy Spirit right like how? The spirit of God will never violate the scripture or the word of God. It will never tell you to command a man under you. It will never tell you to rule over men, to be pastor over men. It will never, 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 never. The Spirit of God walks through this scripture because it's not the author of confusion. So if you have been called by God, if you have the anointing, ask God, how will I manage this anointing? And God will show you and teach you how you will manage it. Yes, you, can, you will be preached, you will preach, but you will not take authority over men. Yes, you will do the evangelism, evangelizing, evangelism, but you will not take authority over men. You will always have somebody who take authority over you. You will be always be under the authority. You will not take the, the you will not take stand or position of men, of men of God to lead or to take authority over men. Why is the name of the Lord Jesus? You will exercise the ministry that is written to you, even in the book of Titus, that you women teach other women 
He has treated them modestly, holiness, about the family, about the marriages, and also the ministry of the children. But you cannot violate against the scripture, the word of God. No, no, no. Some are called to be prayers, prayers warriors. Some are called, yes, they see vision or they, 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 they dream things. And they speak to God like Anna. We see there were women in the Bible who are prophetess like Anna. But they, they never, they were not uh, pastors. They did not teach men. They did not teach in the church. They did not take authority over men. They did not. We have Anna. We have other women in the Bible. But they, they did not become pastors. Nowhere they, they had their own church. And rule over men. Nowhere. So it's a spirit of confusion that comes upon women today. If you have been called, you have the anointing as a woman, you must be under authority. Praise Jesus Christ. And you must exercise according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. God is a God of order. And there is no confusion before God. Hallelujah.